Everyone is called to faith because everyone believes in something. As Christians, our love is founded in faith in Jesus Christ. And because of our faith, we should base our entire lives on our Savior. Yet the question is, how do we understand Jesus, and how can we get to know Him? Any Christian religious leader would tell you that to understand Jesus, you must read the Bible. And this is very true. While I still say that you should pray and ask Jesus to reveal Himself to you, the Bible portrays Jesus Christ as He is. Yet, how can I have faith that the Bible is true? Am I not relying on one book to answer some of the most important questions of my entire life? If I truly am going to risk all that I am, my mind, my body, and my soul, it would seem reasonable that I should first check the reliability of the book that I am determining all of my morals and truths from. The world is a massive place. No individual could possibly witness and understand everything. There's no way that we could experience everything for ourselves. So most of what we know and learn comes from reliable sources. People who are experts, people who we trust. And this is where the majority of almost every piece of information we have ever heard of comes from. Most of us have never witnessed some of the glorious things that the earth holds. Most of us will never witness things like Mount Everest. Yet, we know Mount Everest is there because of the evidence and reliable sources that teach and tell us about this magnificent peak. I assure you that everything the Bible teaches is as real and reliable as the world's tallest mountain. One argument or doubt that many agnostics have is how do we know the Bible is the same as when it was written? It's certainly easy to change the document. It'd be simple for any corrupted ruler or king to simply change the wording of any text to fit his or her purposes. Plus, humans just make mistakes. I have edited this sermon so many times, and even now, I'm finding typos and mispronunciations and screw-ups. So how can the Bible stand virtually unchanged for thousands of years? Well, throughout my sermon, I will show you that the Bible is, in fact, has a lot of evidence that backs it up, and that it is much more valid than you may have thought, and unchanged, other than translated, from over 2,000 years ago. Shortly after World War II, a famous discovery was made near the Dead Sea. 900 documents were found in multiple caves in Qumran. These are known as the Dead Sea Scrolls. These are thousands of ancient scrolls that predate 100 A.D. and include a complete copy of the book of Isaiah. All the books of the Bible are accounted for, except for Esther. What's really amazing is not only the age of the documents, but the lack of variants to trustworthy texts such as the Masoretic Text, Codex Botanicus, and Codex Sinaiticus. Just in case you didn't know, these are the texts we have based on our Bible up to this date. The, mass, the vast majority of the variants are punctuation or spelling errors. Incredibly, none of the variants changed the meaning of the text, nor did they contain any significant theological difference. This unequivocally gives us the assurance that the text we have today in our Bible is the same as the early church had 2,000 years ago. No other secular manuscripts can make the same claim. The Dead Sea Scrolls completely eliminate the proposal that the Bible was flimsily based on faith and hope. The Dead Sea Scrolls may prove that the Bible has been unchanged, but it doesn't prove that everything the Bible says is true. It's just evidence that it hasn't been corrupted. Over the ages, there have been pinnacle characters in history that have either been exaggerated or possibly made up. One that always comes to mind is King Arthur. While many people have read stories of King Arthur, or at the very least heard of King Arthur, there is actually very little evidence to his existence. The same would appear to go for another infamous king, King David. Much like King Arthur, King David is an important figure to his own nation, as King Arthur is to Britain, King David is to Israel. Also, there are some supernatural occurrences surrounding both. 
King Arthur proved himself while he was young by plucking a sword from the stone, while King David proved himself by slaying Goliath the Philistine with small round stones. While the world celebrates their stories, some claim neither one existed. I can't speak for King Arthur, but as for King David, there's evidence. In 1993, archaeologists discovered a small fragment of stone. While the mainstream public never really heard much about this small, broken piece of rock, it generated a lot of excitement among biblical scholars. It was erected originally by Hazael, king of Aram, which is present-day Syria. It's commonly called the Tel Dan inscription. The inscription makes reference to a military victory and corresponds to the biblical account in 2 Chronicles 22, which we'll look at soon. The stone doesn't look like much, but on it is simply bragging rights, which, as I said, matches something the Bible talks about, seen here. He walked also after their council, and went with Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazael, king of Syria, at Ramathil Gilead. And the Syrians smote Joram, and he returned to be healed in Jezreel, because of the wounds which were given to him at Ramah, when he fought with Hazael, king of Syria. Evidently, there is more than one account to the existence of Hazael, and to that of King David. Their battles are documented in more than one way than just the Israelites. Hazael as well documented his victory over the Israelites, proving that most likely David truly did exist. Some try to argue the credibility of the New Testament, especially the Gospels. However, these arguments aren't very valid at all. Some question whether Jesus existed or not. And since we as Christians believe that he rose from the dead, Obviously, it'd be impossible for us to find his body. But archaeologists have found something that is enough at least to prove the credibility of the characters mentioned in the Gospels. You see, the Gospels, most claim, were written too long after Jesus' death to at all be accurate. But I believe that this discovery especially proves that the Gospels were written in absolute accuracy. In 1990, archaeologists made a discovery that, regrettably, most Christians have never heard of. Archaeologists found an ossuary, or basically a casket, containing the remains of, obviously, a deceased person. This archaeological find is called the Caiaphas Ossuary. The inscription reads, Yosef Bar Kaffa, and is dated to the Second Temple period. Yosef, or modern-day Joseph, was the son of Caiaphas. Now, most of us can't read Hebrew and probably don't even know who Caiaphas is, but don't worry, I'll explain it. So, the Caiaphas ossuary is basically a coffin with the words Yosef Bar Kaffa written on it. it. means Joseph, son of Caiaphas. Because families are buried together in tombs during this period, especially Levites or Jewish priests, we know that there was a priest around the time of Jesus named Caiaphas. This may not seem very crucial, however, Caiaphas was the priest that presided over the false trial of Jesus. Because he was presiding over Jesus' trial, his name is mentioned in the Bible, actually, Matthew 26, 57, 67. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. Obviously, the New Testament Gospels at least got the names right, if nothing else. One of the most important figures in history and literature is Pontius Pilate, not to be confused with Pilate. As most of you know, Pilate was the governor of the area Palestine. He was the one who handed Jesus over to the Jews and their court systems. Over the years, there has been a lot to discredit the biblical narrative in regard to the existence of Pilate, However, not too long ago, a stone tablet was found in Caesarea called the Pilate Inscription. The tablet bears an inscription meaning, mentioning the name of Pontius Pilate, the procurator of Judea, and the Tiberium, which was an edifice built in honor of the emperor Tiberius by Pilate. This tablet clearly says that it was from Pontius Pilate, prefect of Judea. 
and verifies that he was a person that lived during the time of Jesus exact, exactly as written in the biblical narrative. As I've shown, archaeology has brought the idea of Judaism and Christianity a long way through the evidence of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Tel Dan inscription, the Caiaphas ossuary, and the Pilate inscription, there is a lot of evidence to back up what the Bible says. In fact, almost to the point that it is undeniable that the Bible is a strong historical reference. The Bible has stood up to many tests and proven itself to be very much true and very, very valid.